Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sharon Boudreau, and today we're going to do the mus assessment of the musculoskeletal uh, system. And this is our client, Ms. Monica Mesh, who's here to see the doctor with some complaints of pain in her jaw area. So because of time constraints, what we're going to do is, is we're only going to do the upper body, but it should be a guide of what needs to be done for the lower body. First thing we're going to do is, is when we start with any system is, is we're going to do a subjective data, and that's going to be a subjective assessment. That's going to be to get a history from her. So do you have any pain or uh, any uh, discomfort at this time? Not really. Okay. So she doesn't have any pain, so that's something good to know. And then what I want to do is get a health history. So I actually got one before because we are limited on time. And there are a couple of things in her health history that are uh, alert us to uh, pre-existing uh, conditions or actually to uh, high risk for conditions. So her female uh, sex does put her at risk for osteoporosis, her age, she's 48 years of age. So when you get to the age of 50, your uh, chances of osteoporosis increases. Osteoporosis is a condition that affects uh, about 10 million people and it's when the bones become porous and brittle and they can break easily uh, and it can cause a lot of problems in older age. Now about 18 million people are, you know, they don't have osteoporosis but they're at risk. So determining the risk factors during the subjective assessment is important. So we've established that she's a Caucasian white female, which those are high risk factors. That's things that she cannot change. But we've also established that there's things in her history that she can change. She doesn't eat a uh, diet uh, high in uh, calcium. So she can definitely take calcium supplements or increase her calcium intake. Um, as far as vitamin D, look, it's been shown that low vitamin D, so she does get, uh, she does exercise on a regular basis, and she does so uh, outside, and which gives her good sun exposure, which is where she can get the vitamin D. So by exercising with, uh, with uh, riding the bike and by doing weights, she does do weight bearing, which is also another uh, prevention technique of osteoporosis. Um, family history, her mother does have a history of osteoarthritis. Uh, she doesn't smoke, so that does help in her uh, prevention of osteoporosis. And uh, from there, we're going to move on to the objective data. So with the joints and the muscles, you're actually going to probably, you're going to be assessing them all together. And then while you're assessing the joints and muscles, you're also assessing the tendons and ligaments. And tendons are what connects muscles to bones, and it connects uh, bone, ligaments connect bones to bones. So before we get started, though, I would have washed my hands. My hands are washed because you always want to wash your hands before and after uh, you uh, deal with the client. And I'm going to make sure that Miss Monica Mesh has privacy and we're going to keep her as covered as possible. So we'll start from head to toe. And what we do with the musculoskeletal system is we do inspection, palpation, range of motion, and muscle testing. So we'll start with the temporomandibular joint, which is a joint that's used anytime you uh, talk, anytime you chew and eat. And so it is a, a joint of high pathology. A lot of people are affected by it. Over 10 million people come into uh, complaints of, uh, with temporomandibular uh, joint disorders. And so I'm going to inspect. And the temporomandibular joint is the joint that connects the mandible, which is the lower jaw, to the uh, temporal cranium aspect of, of, the, uh, of the skull. And your landmarks are going to be the tragus, which is this part of the ear. It's right below the, te the temporal mandibular joint, and that's where I'm actually going to palpate. But I'm going to look, and when I'm inspecting, I'm looking to see for any redness, any swelling, any asymmetry, and I don't see any. And so then next, next I'm going to proceed to palpation. And so I'm going to take my three middle fingers, and I'm going to go right under the tragus. And I don't palpate any, uh, any abnormalities. But what I'm going to also want to do is, as soon as I, I, I'll palpate prior to uh, range of motion, but then when she is doing range of motion, because this is an area of high, of high pathology, I'm going to ask her to do the movements while I'm palpating. Okay, so Ms. Mesh, go ahead and go ahead and open your mouth wide, okay, and then close your mouth, teeth together, okay, and then go ahead and move your jaw, protract, uh, um, protract it out, stick it out, now retract it in, now move your jaw side to side. Any pain with that movement? No. Okay, do you ever have any pain in this area? I do. Okay, and what kind of pain do you have? I clench my teeth when I'm sleeping. I do grind my teeth, so sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, it's, it's 
very sore and I get really bad headaches. Okay, and is it ever tender in that? So it's tender yeah. in this area. Does it ever swell? Um, yeah, I would have to say it does swell. Okay, all right. So that's going to be something that we're going to want to note in the chart for the doctor to see. But another thing that you would want to be looking for is something called crepitation, and that's when the, the abnormal rubbing of the uh, of the bones together. So either you can feel it or you can hear it. So while she was moving her joint, go ahead and move it side to side again. If I were to feel a crunch, that would be a cold crepitation or if I were to hear it. And actually what you want to think of about it would be like sandpaper rubbing together. And I mean, it won't be as loud as this, but that would be, the, that would be the, uh, what you'd feel or hear. Okay. And so, and I don't feel that on her, but that would be something to look for with the, uh, with since the symptoms she's been complaining about. So that was the inspection palpation and the range of motion. And then what I would want to do, and I actually did it, but I didn't say it. When she was moving her jaw, I was actually applying pressure, and she's supposed to be able to push fully against the pressure. So go ahead and move your jaw side to side again. Okay, and open your mouth. Close your mouth. Okay, so that would be graded as it's 0 to 5 on the muscle testing. 5 meaning that she can do full range of motion of that joint against full resistance. Zero would be she couldn't move it at all. So you're looking for a five or a four, and a four would be full range of motion with partial resistance. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and go to her neck area. So you wanna go ahead and stand. Okay, so the cervical spine has seven cervical vertebrae. And I'm gonna inspect first. Then I'm gonna palpate. I don't see any abnormalities, the spine is straight. And then I am going to ask her to do her range of motion test. So what I want you to do is take your chin and touch your chest. Now that's the flexion part, which is about 45 degrees. Now go ahead and tilt your head back, which is about 55. Go ahead and put your head straight back to the neutral position. And then we're gonna do a lateral flexion. Go ahead and touch your ear to your shoulders. Other side, okay. And then we'll do a lateral rotation. Go ahead and look to your left and then look to your right. Now go ahead and we're gonna do the muscle testing. What I want you to do is, is flex your head back while I'm pushing up, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, that was hyperextend. Flex your uh, head forward, okay, while I'm pushing up. She has full muscle resistance to that, so I'm gonna go ahead and grade that as a five. So that's assessment of the neck. <clears throat> now something, now we're gonna move on to the shoulders actually, okay. So the shoulders, what I'm gonna do is look for symmetry, and I actually looked at them from the back whenever I was assessing the neck, and her shoulders are in alignment, but if for some reason one shoulder was higher than the other and she had what was called a hunching position, that would be an indication of a rotator cuff repair. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, a rotator cuff uh, injury. And uh, a rotator cuff is the tendon that connect, that's in, the, that's in the, uh, the shoulder. So I don't see any hunching. She is symmetrical. I don't see any redness. I don't see any swelling. So now I'm going to palpate. Any tenderness or pain? No. Okay, so now I'm going to assess full range of motion. And some tricks to the trade with doing the uh, muscle testing, if you, I use landmarks, but if you happen to have a goniometer, you can use it. And we'll do it once or twice just to show you how to do it. But go ahead, and I want you to lift your hands all the way up, which would be at about a 160 degree angle. And how you use the goniometer is, is you find your baseline of your joint. And this would be, like I told you, I said it was 160 degrees flexion, but she's about 155, so that is normal. So you could document it as that. So go ahead and now that's, um, that's flexion of the arms. Now go ahead and hyperextend the arms by just going straight out to the back like you're gonna apply, okay? And that's at about a 50 degree angle. Of course, you're not gonna get the same degree as you did with flexion with hyperextension. And then while you're at it, Go ahead and do internal rotation, which is cross your arms over. And you see, without even having to measure that this is 90 degrees, I can tell that it's where it needs to be because the palm of her hands are in the thoracic area, and that's where you should be able to get it. If it were lower and she couldn't get it up higher, then that would be abnormal. So now go ahead and turn back around. And now we're going to do the abduction and adduction, which should also be abduction, go all the way up. Touch hand to hand, and that would be 100, uh, between 180 and 160, and come back down to the neutral position. So you see how she's able to do that without any problems? Whenever you have a rotator cuff repair, a sign of it would be the drop arm test, and that would be where I would passively lift up her arm, 
And then when I would be coming down at about 90 degrees, I'm sorry, I would actively lift up her arm, and then I would ask her to bring her arm down. Go ahead and bring your arm down. And at about 90 degrees, when it gets to about right here, that's where she could no longer control it and it would just drop. That would be a positive drop arm test with also the sign of the inspection of the abnormality of a hunched shoulder would be, could be a sign of a rotator cuff repair and that would want to, we'd want to refer her to an MD. So <clears throat> remember that with muscular, we don't have time to assess the lower body, but do remember this, that when you're doing musculoskeletal, you're actually assessing it all together. First you want to do inspection, then you want to do palpation, then you want to do range of motion and each joint has its own range of flexibility. You never push the patient more than what they can do. And if they're in pain, you always stop. You don't push any further. And then also the muscle testing, which is the, a score of zero to five. So we've uh, assessed in the history about the osteoporosis. So that's something that we can start on now. So that that way, because osteoporosis is a condition that once you get it, it's incurable. But there's a lot of ways to prevent it. So if you prevent it from ever happening, that's the best scenario. So that would be it for the muscle testing, uh, musculoskeletal uh, assessment. So um, that would be it. Thank you a lot, Ms. Nash. Thank you.